We used to go into a game store, purchase the game, walk out with this box, and this was the whole experience. This was it. Everything in here we owned, a one-time purchase. And that is where games came from. That is what it was like to buy games 20, 25 years ago. Fast forward to today and we've got game devs like Stevie Chassad having a whinge online about why gamers are not happy with their products anymore. And that somehow we're to blame. That is a little rich coming from the monetization director of Ubisoft. Game devs, don't, don't do this. This is actually sad. Stevie Chassad writes, I rarely post on social media, but today I am sad, ashamed and sad. The gaming industry is rough at the moment, we all know it. But seeing how gamers react on social medias, wishing ill fate to companies and people alike is sad. And not only towards Ubisoft. Even though it is always the vocal minority that express themselves on social media, I was hurt. Hurt and ashamed to be part of this community. What is even more revolting is coming on LinkedIn and seeing the same comments from people within the industry. On top of exposing yourself as a clearly non-decent human being, you are affecting thousands of employees that are already impacted by all the hate despite doing their best to deliver incredible experiences. How can you wish a company to fail simply because they do not cater to you or the product does not please you is beyond me. We are all on the same boat Please, please, please stop spreading hate. We should all uplift each other instead of bringing each other down. Cringe. This is the monetization director at Ubisoft. The fact that Stevie Chassad even has a job title called monetization director is a clear indicator of how much the gaming industry has changed in the last 20 years. If it was just a vocal minority, why do you care, Stevie? Why are you not focusing on the supposed majority that loves and supports what you do? Why are you focusing on a couple of bad apples? Enough to make public posts like this. Enough to come forward and be like, I don't usually post on social media, but here's some stuff just for the three people that offended me. I'll tell you why. It's because it's not just a vocal minority. And I think game developers are realizing that. Actually, game dev is in a much better place than it's been in for years. There are high quality games coming out from much, much smaller and agile teams. Game development has never ever been in the place that it is right now, where huge companies are threatened by tiny developers. That is awesome. That is double thumbs up because it means that creativity is still king. Customers are still king. And developers just like old Stevie Boy here are starting to realize that just because you're part of a huge conglomerate doesn't mean you get the accolades. You don't deserve our money. You don't deserve our support. You have to earn it. What do you actually mean when you say you're ashamed of being a part of this community? Are you talking about the three bad apples, the supposed vocal minority? Are you a part of that community? If you're so proud of what it is that you're doing and you truly believe that you're doing the right thing and that everything is great and you're on the right path, why are you even listening to this vocal minority? It doesn't make any sense, dude. Oh, but hang on. It actually says right here that he was even more revolted by the fact that other game devs were saying the same thing on LinkedIn. So now there's another vocal minority maybe. And that together, these vocal minorities are affecting thousands of people who are just doing their best to deliver incredible experiences. I don't know why devs have made this kind of a the generic response to online criticism by saying we're doing our very best. That's irrelevant. It's they're, they're almost saying that like that's a prerequisite for us to open our wallets. Like just because we did our best, you owe us. No, we actually don't owe you anything. Just because you're doing your best doesn't mean it's good. Your absolute best could result in a shit product. Despite what you may think, no one is obligated to support you just because you did your best. Games are entertainment. If your product is good and entertaining, you will get support regardless of whether you did your best or not. The majority of the game developers that I worked with 
didn't even play the game that they were working on at all. In fact, a lot of them didn't play any games at all. Dude, you working in the entertainment industry, how are you supposed to even understand this from your customer's point of view when you won't even sample the product that you're producing? I don't know if Stevie realizes this, but this makes Ubisoft look even worse. I've always found it super condescending when game devs would use the term gamers in quotation marks. As if we're less than, you know what I mean? Like we're below them. Stevie, let me tell you something, boss. We are your customers. We are the ones who are paying you to be a monetization director at Ubisoft. And when I read stuff like this, it makes me think that you've forgotten that. How about we flip the script on this and as gamers, we get to put game devs in quotes when you guys fail to make a good product. Kind of like, pfft. These guys are calling themselves game devs. Ha! <laughs> oh, look at how hard these game devs are working. That's not so nice now, is it? I was a game dev too, dude. 15 years I was a game dev. I know exactly what it's like dealing with an ornery fan base. I've read comments about me that said I should be lined up against a wall and shot. But I didn't run to social media and have a whinge which reflects poorly on the company that I work for. And this is not something that Ubisoft needs right now, man. Now, where could all this online hate actually be coming from? 15 to 20 years ago, we would walk into a game store, buy a video game, walk out with a physical piece of content that we owned. The game was likely developed by a small group of nerds stuck in a basement somewhere, fueled on a diet of pizza and coke hammering things together, creating amazing experiences that we all remember, even today. And some of us still play those same games from 20 years ago because they are better games. A collector's edition game came with merchandise, a cloth map, a thick book, a manual, maybe even a collectible figurine. That's what a collector's edition meant. The rewards were tangible. Nowadays, a collector's edition is more often than not three days of early access, a couple of extra in-game items, maybe a season pass to more DLC, and that's it. There's nothing physical. You don't even get a game box or a, or a manual, nothing. This is purely digital. And in the case of some online games whose servers are now shut down, you can't even play that game anymore. You paid money for a game that you can no longer play. In fact, a new Californian law requires that all online stores disclose the fact that you are actually purchasing a license. You don't own the game that you are purchasing. And to throw something else on top of this, most games nowadays come with some kind of ongoing investment required by you who have already paid the full price or more to own the game in the first to own the game in the first place to now keep investing little bits of money into the game in order to keep it going and at first this used to be purely cosmetic but nowadays it's things like early access power-ups, in-game items, stuff that gives you a boost right at the start, maybe a small bundle of whatever currency that game dev has set up that enables you to buy more stuff from whatever store they've included in the game. It's like walking into a casino and they say, the first spin is on the house, just to get you hooked. And many of the IPs that are now in their fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh games came from the place where you could walk in, purchase it, and that was it. Cool ideas built by nerds are now built by thousands of people who are trying not to offend anyone at all, but at the same time teaching us lessons in humanity or trying to slide some sneaky political agenda in there. They are riddled with everything I just finished talking about. They are all digital. There's three, four, five different versions of the game that you can purchase with only digital items, varying amounts. We got the standard edition, we got the premium edition, we got the ultra edition, we got the omega edition, we got the omega plus DLC. These beloved franchises are literally a shadow of what they used to be. And that difference, I believe, is where a lot of this online critique comes from. That's really the root of it. And somehow, once again, having a game developer who is a part of that change tell us that we are the problem. It's just the most backhanded 
ludicrous shit I've ever heard of. So Stevie, here is my critique for you, dude. Here's what I would do. If I was in your role, I wouldn't be trying to find more ways to monetize more things in more of the games we make. I would be trying to go backwards and dismantle all the shit that we've done to this point. That's what I would do. Even if that meant sacrificing my own job, I would do it. Because as far as I'm concerned, that would be a small step towards doing the right thing and making your customers feel like they're getting some value out of the investment that they've put into buying your game. Saying that you're doing your best while simultaneously backhanding gamers and making it our fault that your games are failing, that they're not selling enough copies, while delivering mediocre and middling efforts at best and claiming that they are quadruple A level quality, it's insane. Now, despite what you may think, I actually do care about the games industry. I actually do care about all game developers, but I've always been one to call a spade a spade. And right here in your post, you are pleading for everyone to stop spreading hate, while at the same time, you're being condescending to your customers and you're calling anybody who critiques you as non-decent human beings. And unfortunately, this is the exact reason why there is so much buzz around the fact that Ubisoft is filled with toxic positivity. This is, an, this is a prime example of it. It's like you guys just keep coming out proving exactly what we're all speculating. It, this shit is just writing itself. The fact that this is coming from the monetization director of Ubisoft. What makes you think that we'd be interested in anything that you have to say? Other than you were making an announcement stating that you were going to dismantle the whole thing. Here's an absolutely radical idea. You could be the hero that Ubisoft needs, man. You're the director of monetization. You could walk into that boardroom meeting. You could walk right in there and just be like, guys, we actually need to change this up. We need to start doing things a little differently here, man. We need to start turning a few of those knobs backwards instead of turning them up and finding more ways to monetize more ways to extract dollars out of the pockets of our customers i know crazy idea super naive that's not how things work i know i get it i'm just saying imagine it and i know it sounds like i'm picking on ubisoft but there are other companies bioware's another one man we, we all know it there there is a list of these companies that have been making these games and working on these franchises for the last 20 years we're at the fourth fifth sixth iteration of these games and when you compare where they're at now from where they used to be the change is so exaggerated we're just sick of it we're bored of it we're saddened by it and we're utterly tired of the piss poor excuses for why this is happening when it's becoming more and more obvious every single day why it's actually happening and to blame us for it is the reason why you might be on the receiving end of people laughing and hoping that your company fails imagine being that person to look at that sit back and still be like gamers are just crap Gamers are just mean. Get out of here, dude. So what do you guys think this means for the current Ubisoft franchises? We've got Assassin's Creed. We've got Far Cry. We've got Ghost Recon. We've got The Division. We've also got the Splinter Cell remake. We've got Beyond Good and Evil 2, which God knows where that game is, right? It, wasn't that game announced in like E3 2017? That's seven years ago. There's also rumors that Ubisoft intends to make... 10 more Assassin's Creed games in the next five years. Speculation, I, I, there's nothing confirmed, but I'm kind of on a bit of a Ubisoft buzz right now. I want to see what all the fuss is about, why everybody's actually complaining about Ubisoft. And most of the games that I've played are from, let's say, 2015 through to like 2019. And that seems to be like the kind of tipping point where things started to just kind of go, what the hell is going on here, right? And when you look at the Ubisoft share prices, it was around about that same time that stuff started to go south as well. Now, I pretty much finished Far Cry 5 within the last month. I'm now playing Far Cry 6, and the difference between the two games, story-wise, is pretty significant. I also played Ghost Recon Wildlands and Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Both games are kind of outside my typical wheelhouse, but I do really see the reason why people love those games and 
why they still love playing them right, right today. But it does make me really, really interested to see what the next Ghost Recon is going to be like. Will the characters look more like a bunch of Timmies instead of some really nice artistically created characters like we had in Far Cry 5? Will there be some heavy handed writing? We're going to have characters mentioning their gender identities, their, their pronouns, you know, all, all the stuff that's relevant to us in our world right now. Will that be in the next iteration of these games? Our favorite franchises? Let me know in the comments, man. What do you guys think that's going to happen with Assassin's Creed Shadows? Do you think this is going to be one of those games that pulls Ubisoft out of the fire? Do you think it's going to even sell a million copies? You think it's going to be worse than Star Wars Outlaws? It's going to be better? I know we're all playing the speculation game, but I'm curious to know what you guys think. Honestly, let me know. I really enjoy like interacting with you guys about your thoughts and opinions and things like that. Like I said in my last video, I've actually changed my mind on a couple things. Um, I think I'm going to go back and do another video about Dragon Age Veilguard before it releases. So I'll probably do that one next week. We'll cover some more things that we've kind of learned about since the last time I made a video on Veilguard. But yeah, thank you guys very much. I hope you're enjoying these videos. Let me know again down below what you think about all this kind of stuff. I'll try to reply to as many people as I possibly can. Thank you to everybody who subscribes to me here. My Patreon, of course on my Twitch. All the links for that stuff down below. Catch you guys in the next one.